in the next couple minutes, we are aiming to demystify the CCDF uh, planning process a little bit more and share how anyone and everyone can and should engage in their, in their CCDF state plans. So we welcome any questions along the way. Please feel free to use the chat function to submit questions um, that we can address as we go or at the end during Q&A. So the, the development of CCDF state plans provides an opportunity, as you just heard Mario speak about, um, but we'll reiterate, uh, for collaboration and idea sharing among all child care advocates. The CCDF plans were designed to be a public process uh, where you can share your experiences about child care in your state and community and also share what changes you think need to be made to strengthen the system. This isn't just a time for policy wonks to weigh in. I know there are probably some policy wonks on today's call but we don't want that to scare you. Um, when we say anyone and everyone can participate, we truly mean that. Parents, childcare program staff from all childcare settings, CCR and our staff, advocates for children, everyone, everyone is welcome to provide input on their state plans. Participating in the CCDF public comment period lets states, state officials hear from the field, as Mario mentioned, and that is so critical for thinking about what we can do long-term. So if you've been involved in the process before, uh, as Anne alluded to at the beginning, we acknowledge that in past go-arounds, uh, the CCDF public comment periods may have seemed more like a run-of-the-mill compliance process that states simply provide a snapshot of what they are doing with federal funding. Um, we know that these plans haven't always had the biggest, haven't always been the biggest vehicles for future changes. But we want to reframe that narrative and push past that thinking that the CCDF plans are just a document to show compliance with federal law. So the state CCDF plans are meant to serve multiple purposes where, yes, one of those purposes is indeed to act as an official application for federal funds and outline how states will remain in compliance with federal law and rules but they also serve as a guidance document for long-term planning and provide a vehicle for data collection as well. And we believe this year is important, as you'll hear multiple times on this call, to get as many people to participate as possible in the public input process, given everything that's happened. COVID-19 has shown a light on the importance of affordable, accessible childcare options. We are also living through a time where historical amounts of federal funding are being allocated to states to support children, families, and childcare. So with these factors in mind, we believe the CCDF public comment period provides a stop along the, along the long road of advocacy to amplify parent and provider experiences and also spotlight the challenges that exist within the current system. So it's not the only chance we will have to do this, but it's important to keep showing up where we can. Think of it as another bite of the app at the apple or practice leading up to the big game. Providing input during the, this process can elevate provider and family experiences and inform long-term policies that will strengthen the system as we look toward the future, even if they're not immediately adopted within these plans. We've collectively done so much advocacy work in the last year. And it shows that we are being heard. It's important that we keep that drumbeat going on all the advocacy work we have built up in the past year. And the CCDF public comment period is another place for us to show up and to show up really strong. So one silver lining of the pandemic is how it has made advocating more accessible for people because they can do so without ever having to leave their home. Many events turned virtual in the past year as we saw and we are seeing that trend again with the CCDF hearings so far. Some states are making it even easier to submit written comments this year by doing so via online, online surveys, like a survey monkey. So we are saying that there really is no better time to be a first time childcare advocate than now when the pandemic has truly highlighted why we need change and also given us the opportunity to do it from home. With that, we'll move on to the next slide. We'll start digging into some of the new resources that we have. So one other thing I want to talk about, uh, we also want to recognize that there are a million different things going on right now at the state level for advocates uh, between state legislative sessions, state budgets, 
and figuring out what to do with the new federal relief funding. All these things are happening at the same time as the CCDF process. So it's really all of these things coming together at once. So this is why CCAOA has put together resources to support advocates and organizations who are engaging or want to engage in the state CCDF uh, planning process this year. We wanna make participating as easy as possible for you. So we wanna make sure that you have all that background information you need, um, as Mario had talked about, before you engage in the public comment period. So we've relaunched our CCDF uh, hub page with new resources to help you along the way. We are so grateful to have built this updated page with immense help uh, from Jennifer Moore of Weber Moore Partners. This robust resource page is intended for multiple audiences, parents, providers, CCRNR staff, all childcare advocates. That means you could be someone who knows everything or nothing about the CCDF estate planning process and find something here for you. Think of it as your go-to stop for all things CCDF. So now I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes, I know we have a great panel to get to, but I'm gonna walk you through the different sections we have on here. So we begin, as you see on this slide, with a background on what the CCDF plans are. We then walk through those eight sections that Mario brought up um, that states are required to fill out to complete the plan. You'll see the eight sections listed on the slide here. And on the site, you'll see there's a little like carrot function. Um, you can click on the numbered section and read more details. There are drop down menus about what the states need to cover to satisfy each section. And if you have any questions, while you're trying to figure out how to participate in the CCDF process. There's also in the top part of the new page, a TA request box, which is shown here on the slide um, underneath the, the text on the, the left, um, that you can fill out and submit. And CCAOA staff will respond to you to make sure you have answers to any questions you might have. We'll move on to the next slide, please. So we then have some policy recommendations to improve child care and early learning state level policies. States are in a unique position in 2021 and over the next few years to implement transformative policies as a historic investment of federal relief funds becomes available. To support these new bold investments in an Line with our broader policy agenda, CCAOA recommends states include policies in their 22-2024 CCDF state plans that are child-centered, family-engaged, equity-driven, and community-focused, and that's what you'll see on this slide here. So to find more information, you can go to the page. Again, we have those select those drop-down functions for those four topic areas to see which policies we think would best support these four buckets. We also share on the page the different opportunities that advocates have to engage. So we've already covered who can engage, and as a reminder, it's everyone and anyone. Uh, but if you're wondering why it's so important for you to engage, the answer is because it's so critical for you to share your lived experiences um, along with any qualitative or quantitative data on the state of childcare and which policies already um, have best addressed uh, or could best address the ability for childcare to survive and thrive in your state. Policymakers absolutely need to hear from you. There are two main ways that you can participate in the public comment periods. You can do this by either registering to participate verbally or by submitting written comments. And now with the final print of the CD, CCDF plan uh, available, States are beginning to hold their public comment period, so it's time to get ready to advocate. The good news is we have some new tools to help you with that. And we'll go to the next slide, please. So the first thing we wanna make sure is that you're informed of the logistics of your state's public input session so you don't miss the opportunity to participate. On the slide, you'll see a state-by-state -state tracker where we are maintaining uh, to show when and where uh, your state's hearings will take place and also how to submit written comments. We update this multiple times a week, so we encourage you to check it out. Next slide. And then on the final slide, before we go to our panel, uh, we are sharing two sample messages you can use for your verbal testimony or your written testimony. 
providing verbal testimony at your state's CCDF public hearing is a powerful way to advocate for changes to transform childcare. Verbal testimony is especially effective if you uh, speak about your own personal experiences. So some things to keep in mind, uh, your testimony should be short, no longer than three to five minutes in some states. Some states are allow a little bit longer than that, but generally it's going to be under five minutes. So it's, the time goes by really quickly. Um, our first resource here gives you a bunch of talking points that you can choose from um, that were included on the main um, hub page. Um, so you likely, again, won't be able to talk about all of them, um, given you'll only have a few minutes to speak. So just make sure to choose the bullets that mean the most to you and where you can add in a personal story or two. That is really key to your verbal testimony. And then you can always submit a more full written uh, statement afterwards, and some states actually require that you follow up with a written statement after your verbal testimony. And then providing written comments allows more detailed recommendations to be submitted on the state CCDF plan. So if you're nervous about verbally testifying, this is a really great option for you. And we've provided a letter template with CCAOA's policy recommendations to get you started as you prepare written comments. So again, here you are still gonna choose recommendations that you are passionate about and to which you can offer um, a personal or a local example. You don't need to submit the entire statement or comment on every section, but you are also welcome to. Um, we know that everyone's time is really limited these days, so try and make this easy for you. Um, one thing to note is that some states are using online surveys this year to provide feedback on the state CCDF uh, plans. So these comments have been organized uh, by sections. So you can simply cut and paste comments into the online forms and then add a little personal information in there too about why this policy change is so important uh, to you, either as a parent, provider, CCRNR staff, whoever. And just a tip before you start, just make sure to check our tracker to see if your state is accepting emails. Um, some states are only are really pushing people just to use the surveys versus um, an email or you know your traditional snail mail mailing the letter. Um, so just make sure you also check your due date. Some states have some strict due dates um, which you have to adhere by. And then if you need any more help or have questions, you can always feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you again. You can do that using the TA request box that is located on the new hub page.